नमस्कार वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर आशीष तहिया प्रोफेसर एंड डायरेक्टर एट इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ होटल एंड टूरिज्म मैनेजमेंट महर्षि दयानंद यूनिवर्सिटी रोहतक हरियाणा टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू हैव दिस सेशन ऑन पेस्ट कंट्रोल दैट इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर होटल हाउस कीपिंग एट द एंड ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल यू विल डिवेलप an understanding about various types of pests you will learn about the goals of pest control and you will also know the characteristics of common pests found in hotels or homes as well as you will understand the basics of integrated pest management using different methods of pest control pests they make me uncomfortable and i'm sure you also become uncomfortable when you see pests made be your homes or hotels friends pests are unwanted plants animals insects germs or other organisms that interfere with human activity they may trouble you pests may bite destroy food crops damage property or otherwise make our lives miserable they are most commonly found in the kitchens and rooms food and beverage department and housekeeping department in a hotel sector they cause enormous amount of damage and causes a huge loss to hospitality business housekeeping staff has a pivotal role in keeping a check on pest population as a housekeeping staff one must be very vigilant in controlling the pests by applying various pest control techniques pest control is a compulsory activity in hotels restaurants or any other sector of hospitality here in this session we shall discuss about various kind of pests their characteristics and common methods of their eradication let's first talk about various types of pests various types of pests includes insects such as cockroaches termites beetles and fleas there may be eight legged like organisms and examples include mites ticks and some spiders there may be certain microbial organisms such as bacteria weeds any plants growing where they are not wanted molluscs such as snails slugs and shipworms there may be mice and other rodents most organisms are not pests a species may be a pest in some situations and not in others an organism should not be considered as a pest unless it is proven to be the pests are also classified into three categories on the basis of the control that is needed to put a check on them these includes continuous pests they are always present in hotels and require a regular control that is corn earthworms bean beetles codling moths etc there are sporadic pests they are also called as sporadic migratory or cyclical pests as they require occasional control such as hog lice etc there are perennial pests they do not require a control under normal conditions but they may be needed to be checked at certain certain circumstances for example blueberry stem borers caterpillars etc so before applying the methods of pest control one should identify the pest the most one knows about the pest and the factors that influence its development and spread the easier the more cost effective the more successful the pest control will be to identify the pests you need to know the physical features of the pests likely to be encountered the characteristics of the pests that the damages they cause the development and biology of the pests whether they are continuous they are sporadic or they are potential pests the goals of the pest management control program include one the pest control goals whenever you try to control a pest you will want to achieve one of these three goals or some combination of them the first one is prevention keeping the pest away from becoming a problem two is suppression reducing pest numbers or damage to an acceptable level third eradication that is destroying the entire population of pests 
prevention may be a goal within the pest's presence or abundance can be predecided in advance. Continuous pests by definition are usually very predictable. Sporadic and potential pests may be predictable. If you know the circumstances or conditions that flavor their presence as pests, for example, some plant disease occur only under certain environmental conditions. If such conditions are present, you can take steps to prevent the plant disease organisms from harming the desirable plants. Suppression. It is a common goal in many pest management situations. The intent is to reduce the number of pests to a level where the harm the cause is acceptable. Once a pest's presence is detected and control is deemed necessary, suppression and prevention are often a joint goal. The right combination of control measures can often suppress the pests already present and prevent them from building up again to a level where they are causing unacceptable harm. Eradication is a rare goal in outdoor pest situations because it is difficult to achieve. Usually the goal is prevention and or suppression. Eradication is occasionally attempted when a foreign pest has been accidentally introduced but has not yet established in an area. Such eradication strategies often are supported by the government. There are Mediterranean fruit flies, gypsy moth, and fire ant control programs, which are examples of eradication, is a more common in terms of goal indoors as compared to the outdoor ones. In closed environments, usually there are smaller, less, or complex issues. They are more easily controlled than outdoor areas. In many enclosed areas such as dwellings, schools, hotels, office buildings, food processing and food preparation areas, certain pests cannot be or will not be tolerated. There are certain threshold levels. They are the levels of pest population at which you should take pest control action. If you want to prevent the pest in an area causing unacceptable injury or harm, Thresholds may be based on aesthetic, health, economic considerations or other such issues. These levels which are known as action thresholds, they have been determined for many pests. A threshold often is set at the level where the economic losses caused by pests damages. If the pest population continued to grow would be greater than the cost of controlling the pests. These type of action thresholds are called as economic thresholds. For example, when the number of insects on a particular crop exceeds a given quantity, an insecticide application to prevent economic damage could be justified. In some pest control situations, the threshold level is zero. Even a single pest in such situation is unreasonably harmful. For example, the presence of rodents in food processing facilities forces action. At home, people generally take action to control some pests such as rodents or even roaches. Even only one or few of them have been seen. There are common pests and their control measures. Some commonly found pests in the hotels and the ways of controlling them are as rodents. Friends, this includes rats and mites. They are attracted by the food suppliers and food that is there into the hotel vicinity which they get far from their shelter. So in a large facility will nest close to the accessible food stores. Rats and mice are capable of rapid increase in population. Even an abundant food supply due to the number of the litters they are acceptable of producing and the time of maturity, shelter from predators and favorable conditions inside a building. You need to be careful while checking about rodents. There are certain signs. See for example, rats and mice leave distinctive signs that shows their presence. These include one, droppings. You may see droppings in different shapes of different species into the hotel areas. There may be sightings of living or dead animals. There may be noises like squeaks, growing sounds, and smudge marks along runs caused by their only fur. 
tracks in dust or powder put, them, put by them down to indicate their presence. Knowing of building materials, wiring, food and packaging, the gno marks are different. Urine stains are often left along by the trails of both rats and mice and can be detected using a UV light. Urine pillars from where mice infest an area over a long period and would show a serious failure in pest control. For controlling the rodents, it involves the elimination of harboration and around buildings and preventing access to food, water and shelter. There may be many points of entry to a building such as cracks, vents, pipes, cabling, drains, doorways, windows, screens where measures can be taken to prevent access. Any rodent presence must be controlled using traps or poison according to acceptable practices and legislation including food law, health and safety, environmental and wildlife regulations. Rodenticides can also be used to eradicate them. Something very interesting that makes you jump is cockroach. Let's talk about it. Cockroaches are most common types of crawling insects that infests food handling business. They cause particular problems because of their size, giving them the ability to hide in small places. Their varied diet, rapid reproduction and the diseases they can carry. Cockroaches are primarily sheltering in the daytime and coming out at night to find out the food and other sites for shelter. They shelter in dark places such as cracks, crevices, drains, sewers, inside the equipment and even furnishings. They can be seen in hidden spaces that provide the right temperature and humidity. These places are also hard to reach using normal cleaning and sanitation methods. There are various types of cockroach species. Few of them include German cockroaches. This adult is about 12 to 15 mm long with a light brown color. It prefers a wet, humid conditions and especially associated with infestations of kitchen and food storage areas, but also infests in bathrooms, vehicles, offices and administrative areas. It is thought to have originated in East and Southeast Asia and is now the most common cockroach pest in the buildings worldwide maintained by heating systems in cooler climates. It is rarely found outdoors. Its temperature preference is 20 to 27 degrees centigrade. Another one is American cockroach, the largest cockroach where adults are ranging from 35 to 40 mm long and are reddish brown. It requires warm, humid environments to survive. They are found in drains, sewers, basements, storage rooms and waste storage areas. The temperature preference is 24 to 31 degrees centigrade. Oriental cockroaches, the adult is around 20 to 25 mm long. There is an intermediate between the two and has a dark brown or black body. It prefers cooler, darker and damp places to shelter such as basements, the drains and can also be found in your storage and waste storage areas. It prefers a temperature of 20 to 29 degrees. Now let's talk about how to prevent cockroaches. One of the easiest way is following a good sanitation practices that prevent infestations and pick up the presence of the cockroaches. Cockroaches can feed on small residues of food left from spills in the food preparation areas. So good cleaning practices will eliminate these residues quickly and that will ultimately deny them a food supply. Store food in cockroach proof containers, they eat cardboard so this should not be used as a storage area. Maintain drains in good condition to prevent accumulation of food debris and means of access and shelter. Remove waste from food production areas. Use a garbage container design that denies access to all pests. Position garbage containers away from the food storage and processing areas. 
empty the clean and clean the areas frequently. Good building design and maintenance can reduce the risk of cockroach excess that is through spaces around pipe and cableways, vents, screens, windows, doorways and sewers. Following a good inspection regime for our equipment is must. The buildings and deliverables will pick infestations and identify risks quickly. Let's understand how to control cockroach. A number of treatments are available for control of cockroaches including sprays, aerosols, dusts and bait. They are strict regulations for control near food handling and storage areas to prevent contamination of foods with poisons. The insecticide used must be permitted for the use by the relevant local or national authority and will require a competent trained personnel to apply them. Now we move on to the flies. There are a number of fly species that are attracted to food colors generated by kitchens, fruit flies, drain flies and fillet flies which includes house flies. Different fly species are attracted to food products including fermenting sugars, oils, fats, carbohydrates and decaying proteins including vegetable matter. For pest control, it is important to identify which species is present as each has a different attraction and breeding habits. Fruit flies are attracted to fermented sugary liquids in which they can feed breed in a very small amounts in bars, kitchens and restaurants. The liquid containers overripe, they accumulate in garbage, some vegetables, old drink bottles, in drains, in spills, cracks of wet floors, etc. Drain flies are usually attracted to the rotting food, sewage and other organic waste material. They lay egg in organic waste that can build up in drains or polluted shallow water. They can breed in the gelatinous bacterial films, biofilms that form on surfaces in drains, septic tanks, compost and are resistant to cleaning and pest control chemicals. House flies usually breed in decomposing waste such as rotting food and animal fecus. Blow flies lay eggs in rotting meat including kitchen and restaurant waste and dead rats, mice and pigeons. It is important to understand how to control these flies. The applications of standard hygiene and practices are practically important for controlling flies to reduce the attractive odors, feeding material and breeding sites. These practices include adequate food hygiene practices in kitchen and restaurant areas, food preparation areas including floors, walls and equipments are cleaned and inspected regularly including in cracks, crevices and hidden spaces where traces of food and liquid accumulate. Garbage is to be disposed of regularly, at least twice a week in hotter climates. Drains are to be kept free for accumulating organic matter and cleaned with appropriate cleaner. Maintaining barriers to flies including use of screen on windows and that's very effective. The vents in the kitchen areas maintained in good condition, doors should be kept shut down when not in use, there may be an effective use of air curtains. The building is maintained to prevent gaps appearing in any part of the building fabric that would allow insects to enter. UV light traps to catch flies hygienically in food preparation and storage areas can also be used. Now we talk about elimination. As a last resort pesticide is applied using approved products applied by trained personnel following accepted practice that include stored product insects, SPIs, stored product insects are called as pantry pests include beetles, weevils, moths and mites which are popularly seen in different areas specifically back of the houses that can infest food in storage. Most dried food products are susceptible to pest infestation including cereal products, seeds, nuts, dried fruit species, 
powdered milk, tea and preserved meats. All stages of the pest can be present simultaneously in the food that is egg, larva, pupa and adult. SPIs are more likely to infest products that have been opened but can also enter the packaging made of paper, cardboard, plastic, cellophane or foil. By chewing through the packaging material or crawling through folds and seams, larva especially can make very small entrance holes that are difficult to detect. Insects contaminate large quantities through physical damage, cocoons, etc., and the introduction of microorganisms that cause further degeneration, making food unfit or unacceptable for the human consumption or for the use of the food preparation. Food can become infested at any point in the supply chain but is more likely to be infested in stores when it is kept in the shelves for long periods. They can be controlled by using airtight containers for storage, reducing intergranular spaces, coating container with oil or clay and treating them with contact. Mosquitoes, each one of us know about it. They spread diseases such as malaria and yellow fever. As their life cycle starts in water, do not allow water to stagnate in and around the property. Repair and fill all pits and puddles. Cover drains and pour kerosene oil into these to prevent larvae from thriving there and growing into adult mosquitoes. Fine goes on window prevents the entry of mosquitoes. An effective eco-friendly method for the control of mosquitoes is place spots of water around bed bugs. Now we talk about bed bugs and another pest. These are very small insects and live by eating on human blood. They, the areas where they can be found are furniture, beddings and blocks. They can survive without food for several months. They spread very unpleasant smells. Their bites causes irritation and end up in large red patches on the skin. They can be controlled by spraying suitable insecticides, by heat treatment or fumigation. Furniture, bedding and bookshelves should be cleaned. Termites are another variety of pests. These insects cause serious damage to the wood and paper. They eat wood as food. Three types of termites are commonly found. That is the subterranean, the damp wood and the dry wood termites. The subterranean termite lives in damp areas such as soil. The damp wood termite lives near to the ground or a leaking roof. The dry termite is found in dry seasoned wood of desert areas. They can be controlled by applying suitable chemicals on wood which makes it resistant to the termites. They can also be controlled by applying chemicals to the soil immediately under the structure which is under infestation. Now we talk about integrated pest management. Integrated pest management is the combination of suitable pest control tactics into a single plan to reduce pests and their damage to an acceptable level. Using many different tactics to control a pest problem tends to cause the latest disruption to the living organisms and non-living surroundings at the treatment site. Relying only on pesticides can cause pests to develop resistance to pesticides and can harm surface on non-target organisms. With some basics using pesticides alone will not achieve adequate control. To solve pest control, you must identify the pests or pests. The determination whether the control is warrant or necessary, determine your pest control goal know what are the control tactics and evaluate the benefits vis-a-vis -vis hazards. Choose a strategy that will be most effective and will cause the least harm to the people and the environment. Use each tactic in a strategically correct way. Observe local, state and regulations which are there applicable in the respective area. Your strategy you should choose 
will be depending on the pest you have identified and the kind and the amount of control you need to do. There are natural control measures as well. Some natural forces act on all organisms causing the populations to rise and fall. These natural forces act independently of humans and may either help or hinder pest control. You may not be able to alter the action of natural forces on a pest population, but you should be aware of their influence and take advantage of them when possible. Natural forces that affect pest population include climate, natural enemies, natural barriers, availability of shelter, and food and water supplies. Climate, weather conditions specifically temperature, daylight and humidity affect the pest activity and the rate of reproduction. Pests may be killed or suppressed by rain, freezing temperatures, droughts or other actions or matters such as adverse weather. Climate can also affect pests indirectly by influencing the growth and development of their hosts. A population of plant eating pests is related to grown of its host plants. Unusual weather conditions can change normal patterns so that increased or decreased damage results. For natural enemies, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish and mammals feed on some of the pests and help control their number. Many predatory or parasitic insect and insect like species feed on other organisms. Some of them are pests. Pathogens often suppress pest populations. There are also geographic barriers. Features such as mountains and large bodies of water restrict the spread of many pests. Other features of the landscape often have similar effects. Food and water supply. Pest populations even can thrive only as long as the food and water supply lasts. Once the food source, plant or animal is exhausted, the pests die or become inactive. The life cycle of many pests depend on the availability of water. Shelter. The availability of shelter can also affect some pest populations. Overwintering sites. Places to hide from predators are important for their survival in some cases. There are applied controls. Unfortunately, natural control do not control the pests quickly or completely. Enough to prevent unacceptable injury or damage. Then their control measures must be used. There are some control measures as following. One, host resistance. Some plants, animals and structures resist pests better than others. Some varieties of plants, woods and animals are resistant to certain pests. Use of resistant types when available help keep pests populations below harmful levels by making conditions less favorable for them. Host resistance works in three ways. One, the chemicals in the host repel the pest to prevent the pest from completing its life cycle. The host is more vigorous or tolerant than other varieties and thus less likely to be seriously damaged by the pest attacks. The host has physical characteristics that make it more difficult to attack. Now, biological control. Biological control involves the use of natural enemies, parasites, predators and pathogens. You can supplement this natural control by releasing more of the pest's enemies into the target area or by introducing new enemies that were not in the area before. Biological control usually is not eradication. The degree of control fluctuates. There is a time lag between pest population increase and the corresponding increase in the natural controls. But under proper conditions, sufficient control can be achieved to eliminate the threat of the plant or animal to be protected. Biological control also includes methods by which the pest is biologically altered as the production and release of large number of sterile males and the use of pheromones or jewel hormones. Pheromones can be also useful for monitoring pest populations. Placed in a trap, for example, they can attract the insects in a sample area so that pest numbers can be estimated. 
pheromones also can be control tools. Sometimes a manufactured copy of the pheromone that a female insect uses to attract male can be used to confuse males and prevent mating resulting in lower number of pests. But these all techniques are at a macro level. Applying jewelin hormones in an area can reduce pests number by keeping some immature pests from becoming normal reproducting adults. There can be a possibility of cultural control. Cultural control practices sometimes are used to reduce the number of pests that are attack attacking the cultivated plants. These practices alter the environment and the condition of the host plant or the behavior of the pest to prevent or suppress an infestation. They disrupt the normal relationship between the pest and the host plant and make these pests likely to survive, grow or reproduce. Common cultural practices include rotating the crops, cultivating the soil, varying the time for planting or harvesting, planting trap crops, adjusting row width and pruning, thinning and fertilizing cultivated plants. As I discussed that these all are the methods to be used at macro level. In hotels in particular, we use micro level methods, we shall be discussing them as well. It is also important for us to understand that the pests, they alter in an environment and are called as mechanical or physical controls, traps, screens, barriers, fences, nets, radiation and electricity sometime can be used to prevent the spread of pests into an area. Lights, heat and refrigeration can alter the environment through suppress or eradicate some pest populations. Altering the amount of water including humidity can control some of the pests especially insects and disease agents. Sanitation, sanitation practices help to prevent and suppress some pests by removing the pests on the resources from food and shelter. Urban and industrial pests can be reduced by improving cleanliness, eliminating pest harborage and licensing the frequency of garbage pickup. Management of pests attacking domestic animals is enhanced by good manure management. Carryover of agricultural pests from one planting to the next can be reduced by removing crop residues. Other forms of sanitations that help prevent pest spread include using pest free seeds or transplants and decontaminating equipment, animals and other possible carriers before allowing them to enter a pest free area or leave the infested areas. The proper design of food handling areas can reduce excess or shelter for many pests. Now we talk about chemical control. It can be used both at macro as well as micro level. Pesticides are chemicals that are used to destroy pests and control their activity or prevent them from causing damage. Some pesticides either attract or repel pests. Chemicals that regulate plant growth or remove foliage also are classified as pesticides. Pesticides are generally the fastest way to control pests. In many instances, they are only tactic available. Friends, to sum up, pest control is necessary for the maintenance of a hygienic and safe environment. For this very purpose, various methods of pest control are available like physical control, biological control, natural control and chemical control. Before applying any method, one should establish the goal for pest control. Only after deciding it, one should proceed further with appropriate pest control methods. But it should be noted that for common pests, prevention is better than cure. Maintenance of hygiene and sanitation is the best prevention. It is also to be noted that pest control methods should only be applied when the pests are identified. This is because these methods cause undue harm to other living beings too. Besides this, these pest control chemicals cause some degree of damage to materials and fabric in some cases. Further, it is important for you to understand that many hotels have their own pest control team. However, few of them go for outsourcing or contracting facilities in pest control. 
pest control india and other are some outsourcing teams which do provide pest control facility to the hotels ultimately a happy guest would be one whom you assure quality services and of course without pests so i hope that this video will help you to understand about pests you may take an assignment to visit a nearby hotel understand what pest control policy and activities do they follow prepare a chart about it and learn and develop an understanding about this thank you